and welcome to Little Learners. In today's video we're going to be looking at a document that the Department for Education just published called 10 Top Tips to Encourage Children to Read. Now I've seen some people post about this and not be very happy with it but I didn't want to have a look at the comments or have a look at it until I could film so I want to react to it with you. We can see what all the fuss is about and see if these tips are actually helpful when trying to encourage your child to read. I also have some videos about how to support children with their reading. I will link them in the description box below. So I've got it up on my laptop here and we're going to have a look. Before we get started, don't forget to click that like button if you enjoy the video as it really helps out the channel. Okay, so we have 10 top tips to encourage children to read. Number one. What? No. On. Okay, so number one is encourage your child to read. I'm sorry, but when you ask for the definition of something, you can't use the actual thing in the definition. This is tip one. The first tip to encourage your child to read is encourage your child to read. So, you know, just starting off with some very helpful advice. I'm assuming this is what people <laughs> were talking about when they were posting about it. Okay, so it says encourage your child to read, reading helps your child's well-being, develops imagination and has educational benefits too. Just a few minutes a day can have a big impact on children of all ages. That would have been fine I think if it was kind of a subheading or just a little introduction to this list, but you can't have that as number one in the list. DFE. I know you're probably very used to hearing this a lot by now, but do better. Hello everyone, this is Amy from the future. I'm just editing this video and wanted to let you know that now if you go onto this website for the list that I'm reading out, the title has changed. So it used to look like this, 10 top tips to encourage children to read, with that first tip being encourage your child to read. Now if you go on the website, the title has changed to 10 top tips for parents to support children to read, although the URL still says encourage. Just wanted to let you know that, so clearly DFE noticed there was a bit of an error there. Although, to be honest, I think it's still a pretty obvious one, even if you're asking how to support children to read, saying encourage them to read still isn't a great tip. Back to the video. Okay, so <laughs> I've processed number one now, let's move on to number two, Surely we're not going to get any worse than that and hopefully there will be some good advice in this list. Number two is read aloud regularly. Try to read to your child every day. It's a special time to snuggle up and enjoy a story. Stories matter and children love rereading them and poring over the pictures. Try adding funny voices to bring characters to life. It's really important to read to your child, read with your child, modelling that behaviour of reading. It's lovely for children to hear stories, even when they can read independently. It's important for them to hear stories as well and be able to just enjoy listening to them. I like the idea of snuggling up to enjoy a story together, especially at bedtime, but you can do that really at any time. My son is four months old and I snuggle up and read stories to him all the time and he really enjoys it. And the whole thing about trying to add funny voices to bring things to life, I think that's really important as well. I know many parents might find that a bit tricky because that doesn't necessarily come naturally to you, but children don't care. Children just enjoy when a story comes to life. And so if you're feeling a little bit embarrassed about making these funny voices, just remember that your child isn't going to think that you're embarrassing. They're going to think that the story is now really interesting and they might giggle at some of the voices that you do and that's a good thing. Number three is encourage reading choice. It says to give children lots of opportunities to read things in their own time. It doesn't have to be just books and that I think is a good piece of advice. Reading isn't just about books. Of course books come into it a lot but there are lots of different things to read in our environment, signs on the street, posters that you see, really anything with words on or even just with letters on if children are currently practicing their phonics. Okay, so they go on to list. There's fiction, non-fiction, poetry, comics, magazines, recipes and much more. Recipes are a great one as well, although they can be 
tricky if children are just learning to read, so that might be something that they do with you. Try leaving interesting reading material in different places around the home and see who picks it up. Okay, I mean, sure. I think it's really important to go with your child's interests. So if you are struggling to get them to read and they are interested in dinosaurs, for example, then maybe get some different literature around dinosaurs. You might have some fictional stories, you might have some non-fiction books, you might have a comic or a magazine that involves dinosaurs. That's kind of a way to get in, kind of a doorway to reading, to, to go along with their interests so that they start reading and then have fun reading and then you can start branching out to different things. Number four is read together. Choose a favourite time to read together as a family and enjoy it. So you must enjoy it. That's fine, I just think it's funny to say do this and enjoy it. You might not enjoy it one day, you might not like one of the stories, but anyway. This might be everyone reading the same book together, reading different things at the same time. That's really lovely for children to be reading and to see their parent or carer also reading at the same time. Or getting your child to read to each other. This time spent reading together can be relaxing for everyone. Yes it can, but please don't be upset or feel like you're doing something necessarily wrong if reading time isn't always relaxing and if it is sometimes stressful because if your child doesn't really like reading and you're trying to encourage them to read that can be quite stressful if they really don't want to so don't worry if sometimes reading time isn't this lovely relaxing quiet period of the day because the reality is it's not always like that that is of course what we want to achieve and hopefully eventually you will be able to achieve that Number five is create a comfortable environment. Make a calm, comfortable place for your family to relax and read independently or together. Now this does kind of sound like, you know, you would be able to create an area in your home just for reading and that maybe is possible for some people, but for many people that's not possible. You don't have a spare corner of your home or a spare corner of the room to be able to do that with and to dedicate it to being a reading zone. So you might decide that when it's reading time you might put lots of cushions on the sofa and that is kind of the little reading snug and then you take those off and do something else another time. But I would say that encouraging children to read in lots of different places is really important. So of course if you're trying to encourage them to read and they're not wanting to, then creating this environment and saying it's reading time and it's a really nice time and kind of making that a special part of the day is lovely. And don't worry if you're not able to dedicate a whole place in your home for, just for reading. Number six is make use of your local library. Now this is kind of funny to me because lots of places don't have the funding for libraries anymore. Lots of libraries have had to close and they are so important. So obviously at the moment we're in the middle of a pandemic and kind of this semi-lockdown. This says that libraries in England are able to open from the 4th of July. So by the time this video goes out, they will be open. Whether or not you want to go at the moment, totally up to you. But libraries are wonderful and when you do feel it is safe to do so, libraries are a great place, I've said it lots of times on the channel to go and explore different books and you don't then have to go and buy lots of reading material. Local libraries offer brilliant online materials including audiobooks and ebooks to borrow. That's a good point so you could look at audiobooks and ebooks in the meantime. See Libraries Connected for more digital library services and resources so that's a link I will put that in the description box below if you want to have a look. Number seven is talk about books. This is a great way to make connections, develop understanding and make reading even more enjoyable. Start by discussing the front cover and talking about what it reveals and suggests the book could be about. So this is lovely because children can start developing their own ideas around a story and use what they've learnt from other stories to start guessing what might be happening in a story. Doesn't matter if they're completely wrong because obviously we're just looking at the front cover, but it's a lovely way to engage them and then they might be more excited to find out what is actually happening in the story. Then talk about what you've been reading and share ideas. You could discuss something that happened that surprised you or something new that you found out. You could talk about how the book makes you feel and whether it reminds you of anything. So a lot of this comes with comprehension skills and making it clear to children that reading isn't just about reading the words. You need to be able to take in meaning and then 
it's great to be able to contextualise that in their own world for them. So how did the book make them feel? Does that remind them of anything? If it's Biff and Chip at the beach, do you remember when we went to the beach? What did we do there? Did we do anything similar to Biff and Chip? Number eight is bring reading to life, which we've kind of discussed before about doing different voices to bring the story to life. This says you could try cooking a recipe you've read together. Why would you read a recipe if you weren't going to make it? Would you recommend it to a friend? Alternatively, play a game where you pretend to be the characters in a book or discuss an interesting article you've read. So I like the whole playing a game where you pretend to be characters in a book because that brings in role play. And of course, in early years, that is so important. And children will often take ideas from stories or films that they've seen, television, things that they've heard and put that into their role play. So really lovely things to do. For example, if you are reading, we're going on a bear hunt, you could then pretend to do a bear hunt around the house, hide teddy bears around the house and go and find them all, things like that. So it's just bringing that story out of the book, off of the pages and into their world. Number nine is make reading active. Play games that involve making connections between pictures, objects and words, such as reading about an object and finding similar things in your home. You could organise treasure hunts related to what you're reading. Try creating your child's very own book by using photos from your day and adding captions. So I really like that. That's just another way to be reading and it doesn't necessarily have to come from a book and then making your own book is also lovely because it's something they can be proud of and you can go and show it to other people, ask other people to read it. They can read it to you, you can read it to them and it's something personal to them as well. Number 10 is engage your child in reading in a way that suits them. You know your child best and you'll know the best times for your child to read. If they have special educational needs and disabilities, then short creative activities may be the way to get them most interested. Please note that that says may be the way. There is absolutely no way you can group all children with special educational needs and disabilities together, nor the way that they are interested in reading. So I think it's important to recognise that this does say that you know your child best and that is very true. So whichever way your child likes to engage in reading, if they like to do it in the evening, if they prefer to do it at breakfast time, if they like to do it on the bus, just use that. Use your knowledge about your child to be able to create an exciting and engaging reading time for them. If English is an additional language, encourage reading in a child's first language as well as English. What matters most is that they enjoy it. and. That last line there, I think, really hits the nail on the head, even if some of this list did kind of miss the mark in some places. Make sure children enjoy reading. That is all we want, especially for early years children, is to enjoy looking at books and reading lots of different things in their environment. Picture books are great. They are a great way to engage children in reading, even though there aren't any words, because it helps with their comprehension skills and getting used to looking at books, turning pages, and then when you move on to reading words, that's just building on the skills they already have. And if you do it in a fun, engaging way, then children will be able to enjoy it. As I said earlier, reading doesn't always end up being a fun time for a lot of families. This isn't all the time, but sometimes a child might be really, really tired or just doesn't want to read or finds a book boring. And that's okay, don't worry if every reading time isn't this magical experience where everything goes smoothly because the reality is that isn't how things work so don't worry if that is happening to you. However if every single reading time is a struggle then there are some tips like these and like some in my videos that can help you and it's also important to talk to your child's teacher as well because they will be able to give you advice more tailored to your child because they also know your child well. So that was the government's list of 10 top tips to encourage children to read. This was published on the 16th of July. Looking at it as a whole, there are some good tips in there. Some of them may be more obvious than others. There are some good ones that you can kind of pick out, like ways to bring books to life, stories to life. The fact that reading isn't just about books, going with what you know about your child, using libraries. But yes, that first one, encourage your child to read. Yes, but I don't think you can have that as a top tip 
of how to encourage your child to read. So really, I think this is a nine point list rather than a 10 point list. If you would like to see some more points about how to help your child to read, some activity ideas and ways to kind of troubleshoot any problems that you might be having, do check the playlist linked in the description box below. That's all I have for you today. Don't forget to click that like button if you enjoyed the video as it really helps out the channel. Click that subscribe button so that you see future videos. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.